I hope that every step turns pass fail and and we as a society and and culture of pre-meds and medical students go, you know what? I'm going to show my other traits and skills and I'm going to work hard during my rotations and be the best student out there, not by pushing down my other students, but by just being the best me. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A. How are you today? I'm good. Awesome. I'm excited to dive in and learn how I can help you. What's going on? So my question uh, relates to the new USMLE pass-fail um, guidelines. Yeah. Um, and so mainly my question is, um, how will that affect DO schools using... Um, Comlex, because Comlex, as I understand, has not gone past fail. Yep. And what are residency directors going to look for now that there's no more score on step? Yeah, on step one. On step two, step three, there's still step scores. Um, great question. Actually, yesterday I recorded, today it went out as we're recording this episode, episode 379 of the pre med years, where I kind of laid out my thoughts about step one going past fail. And really what it comes down to is it's change. USMLE is not that old. The, the USMLE step system was born in the early 90s. So it's not that old, which tells you, right? If you go back, I, I read a great kind of, it wasn't a research article, but it was a great article in a research uh, publication, I believe, that basically laid out the history of medical certifications, right? The, this whole credentialing process and, and these medical exams. Starting in the late 1800s, early 1900s, how the states used to all have their own individual tests and then they they got together and the FSMB and MBME and all these other acronyms came together and, and started these different tests and they tried to figure out. So like there used to be a, like a literal like bedside test, which is kind of what we have as our clinical skills section of step two now. Uh, and so at some point, the the answer to the question is, this is just change, just like there's always been change, right? Imagine, I, I said in, in the pre years, 379, imagine being like early 1990s, applying to medical school, and all of a sudden they drop this hey, by the way, medical students, you're going to take a test second year of medical school. You're going to take another test your fourth year of medical school. And oh, by the way, you're going to take a third test during your residency, right? If we had podcasts and social media and YouTube, the internet would be freaking out going, oh my God, this is so unfair. How could you do this to us, right? So this has just changed. So I, I want to preface everything I'm about to say with that, right? It's just change and everything will still be okay in the end, right? The, the process will still move on, the world will still turn, and everyone will be happy. So one of the biggest kind of assumptions, and, and everything to this point is just huge assumptions, is that DO schools, international medical schools, are going to be hurt the worst by this. Everyone is saying, oh, you have to go to the most prestigious medical school now to, to get the top residency. and. I just don't think that's the case. When you look at surveys of program directors going back to 2018 is the latest one that I was able to pull up, right? Prestige of the medical school, only 50% of program directors said it was something that they, they cared about in determining who they wanted to interview uh, for a residency position. And they ranked those 50% that said it was something that they looked at they ranked it at a 3.8 out of 5, so not very high. And if you, when you look at the graph yourself, and I encourage everyone to do that, just Google, Google Residency Program Director Survey NRMP. You'll find it. I'll put a link in the description in the YouTube video if you're watching this on YouTube. The, the survey, right, only 50% said it's a factor, 3.8. Now, number one on the list is step one, and everyone assumes because it's at the top, it's the most important thing. But that's not what the survey is saying. The survey is just saying that the most amount of program directors stated it as a factor in determining who they want to invite for an interview, right? It was just the most popular factor, not the most important factor. They breaked it out of four, I think, 4.1. 
Step two score was a few spots down at um, 80% maybe, a little bit less. I forget off the top of my head. And they ranked it at a four, right? Step one, 4.1. Step two, 4.0. Step two is still scored. And what potentially may happen is step two will become more important in that process. And now because step two may become more important, again, this is all just a bunch of guessing. If step two becomes more important, well, guess what? You as a DO student still have the opportunity to take step two, right? You can you can take step two and do well on step two and still crush that. So you still have the opportunity to stand out. A lot of this process has always been subjective, and a lot of students scream from the rooftop saying that's just not fair. There needs to be an objective way to measure this. And my response is, no, there doesn't, <laughs> right? Life is subjectively unfair, right? When you apply for jobs, they're not going, oh, let me, let me have you take this test and I'll determine if you are fit for this job. It's not an objective world. And so, yes, right, if you look at, again, that survey, Step one was, I think, 94% of program directors listed it as a, a, a factor in determining if they would invite someone for an interview. Letters of recommendations was number two at, I think, a higher rating. I think I think a 4.2 or 4.1 or right, right around the same, right? So a little bit less people determining, saying, hey, it's a, it's a, it's a factor in deciding at just as strong of a of a number and how important it is. Super, quote unquote, subjective, right? A letter of recommendation. So connections, networking, all of that stuff has always been important and may potentially be more important moving on. Maybe for DOs and IMGs even more, right? And all of this is maybes, guesses, just possibilities, right? This is all guessing until we actually know. Now, on my specialty stories podcast, I talk to program directors. And this is something that I've been asking for a while now because I knew this was coming, right? They've been talking about this. This wasn't news to me. The announcement was finally like, okay, great. They finally came public with the information. But they've been talking about this for a while. And the conversations that I've had with program directors, I ask, like, Step one is potentially going pass fail. How is this going to change your your residency process? And most of them were like, it really won't. I look at every application no matter what, right? And and students think, well, that's complete BS because as pre-meds, right, your thought process is when I apply to medical school and they say they look at every application, that's just, that can't be true because they get 10,000 applications, Residencies programs don't get that many applications. They may get a few hundred. They may get a thousand, right? It's, it's possible to look through every application. And so most of them say nothing will change. They'll have to look at some different things, potentially a little, a little bit differently, but nothing will change. All of them say your, your scores in your clerkships, your surgery scores, your, your uh, internal medicine scores, those are really important, right? Those letters of recommendations, the dean's letter, super objective or subjective stuff, right? Those are all important. A few of them were like, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. And that's great. They don't know and they'll figure it out. So I think at the end of all of that rant, the answer really is nobody knows, but everything will be okay. And yes, students who got into a DO school shouldn't withdraw their acceptance and fix their application and reapply to MD schools. Go to the school if you are happy that you were accepted at. Be a strong candidate. You, at the end of the day, that will never change. You are the, the kind of key to everything in your journey. You working hard, you scoring well. Remember that step two is still there for you to do well. Comlex being uh, level one, being scored, may be a, a benefit for DO students now to say, hey, look at this, this amazing level one score that I got. That, that other student, they just have a, a P on their, their step one. Look at my score. So we don't know, uh, but everything will be okay. Uh, is, is, com is Comlex also talking about going past fail at all? You know what? I haven't heard any rumors about Comlex going past fail. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're talking about it because step one did. My biggest complaint is that step 
the, the USMLE didn't make every step pass fail, right? The fact that they only did step one pass fail confuses me. And there are lots of rumors as to why they did this. There are lots of assumptions as to why they did this. And I don't really need to get into them because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. They did it, right? It's pass fail. Every step should be pass fail. Comlex should be pass fail. Because at the end of the day, those are exams to determine whether or not you are capable of practicing medicine here in the United States. And a score doesn't tell you that. A pass or a fail tells you that. The score is just being used in a way that it's really not supposed to be used, right? It, it, it's not meant to be used to determine your strength to, to be a radiologist versus an, an internist. It's just a score. So I'm glad that step one went pass fail. I think hopefully it'll reduce the stress on students in the first couple years of medical school. I hope that every step turns pass fail and, and we as a society and, and culture of pre-meds and medical students go, you know what, I'm going to show my other traits and skills and I'm going to work hard during my rotations and be the best student out there, not by pushing down my other students, but by just being the best me and, and have that stand out. And yes, it's subjective. And yes, there are bad attendings out there who, who may hurt you in this process, but that's life in general as well. Got it. Anything else? No, I think that pretty well answered it. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. It's a scary time. I, I think just students are, are scared of change, right? Humans are scared of change. But again, I think at the end of the day, everything will be okay. And uh, students who are in the Caribbean, who are overseas, students trying to get to the States uh, who have graduated, uh, who are immigrants trying to come to the States to do residency, they'll, they'll figure out a way. I am glad it happened as I was a pre-med versus when I was a med. <laughs> yeah. The, the students studying for the test this year, knowing that it's going to go past veil in a year or two, they're like, no, that's not fair. <laughs> right. But, all right. Well, good luck to you, and uh, thanks for the question. Thank you. I appreciate it.